I recently made a particle separator for my shop vacuum. The project required several pieces of plywood to be cut in circles and I did that on my bandsaw circle cutting jig. However, one piece did need a groove cut in it so that it would fit on a bucket uh, and I did not have a router circle cutting jig uh, so I made one. I'd like to show that to you today. I had an edge guide for this router that came with a couple of uh, steel rods that fit in the guides on the router base. Uh, could have used drill rod, uh, would prefer not to use the steel rod from the home center. Uh, if you buy buying steel rod and need steel rod, go to Fastenal or some other place, uh, industrial supply and get drill rod. Uh, it's not very expensive and it's a lot better quality rod. These were fine. Uh, I had to measure two, uh, two critical measurements. I needed to know the distance between here and here. It turned out to be two and three eighths inches. And I need to know that height of these holes, the center of the holes, which is three quarters of an inch. I took two pieces of oak, uh, just some scrap I had, and cut them to four and three eighths inches to give me an inch on either side, taped them together with blue painter's tape, marked out my holes at two and at two and three eighths inches apart, three quarters inches high on the two pieces and, and drill the through holes uh, through both pieces. The one piece needed a three eighths inch hole that was threaded. So I drilled it at the appropriate size, uh, tapped it with a regular metal tap. Uh, I find that in oak and uh, Cherry, at least in my experience. Uh, threading these pieces of wood works just fine as long as it's not something that's going to have a lot of torque on it and you, if you're not going to be just using it constantly. Uh, I've had real good luck with doing that several times in the past. If you don't want to tap threads into the wood, you could use a pronged T-nut or threaded inserts. Either one will work just fine. So this piece was threaded, I, cut a, I drilled a quarter inch hole in the middle and on the bottom to accept a short piece of dowel. The other piece has a hole in it large enough that the, it will spin on the threaded rod. I captured it between two lock nuts and washers so that it won't move, there's no play but it'll still spin on the rod. Slide the, the pieces together. This piece I drilled two five sixteenths inch holes and threaded it for the thumb screws. That gives you the gross coarse adjustment on the circle cutting distance or radius. The radius of the cut will be from the pin to the router bit. If that's in a hole, I know that's too big, but you get the idea. Put that in the hole, there's your circle cut. Final adjustment is done with the threaded rod, which moves this piece in or out. Might be hard to tell that it's actually moving, but it's turning out. It's moving out now, which makes the circle larger. So that's a fine adjustment. If you get close with the course adjustment, you can adjust it just exactly the circle you need to, to cut. Uh, you could actually cut all the way through with this. Uh, probably need to make two or three passes going through uh, plywood or whatever. Uh, but in my case, all I needed was a groove. I used to cut it. I cut it once with a 1 8 inch bit. That was not quite wide enough, so I adjusted it just slightly, made another pass on it, and it fits the bucket just perfect. Worked real good. So that's it. Fairly simple build. Doesn't take long to do it. 
You just common hardware items that you probably have in your shop already, and it works real good. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope you'll hit the like button, and have a great day.